All right, next we're going to do some example problems. But first of all, let's just review the constant acceleration kinematic equations. These were derived in a, another video. So we have the velocity as a function of time equals v naught plus at, where v naught is the initial velocity. We have position as a function of time, x of t equals x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half at squared. X naught, of course, is our initial position, V naught is initial velocity, and A is our constant acceleration. Now the third equation we can also use. Now notice that this is not an independent equation. We can use the first two equations to solve all the constant acceleration motion problems. However, sometimes they don't give us the time. And so if we solve the first two equations together and eliminate the time, we end up with the third one. And so that is more convenient to use in problems when we're not given the time. Now, it's not necessary to use this one. It just saves us a step in the algebra. If we could still solve the problem using the first two equations, it would just require an extra algebra step to find the time first before we could find one of the other unknowns. All right, some hints for solving motion in one dimension problems. First of all, Draw a simple diagram and include a coordinate system. When there is more than one object, mark coordinates for each object and be careful of the signs and the directions of the velocities and accelerations for each. Remember we did that problem with the police car and the red light runner. We did something like that. Two, remember each of the objects moves in the same time frame. So when two objects meet, that means they occupy the same position at the same time. Three, if you are in doubt about an equation, check the dimensions or the units of each term. Remember, velocity as units of meters per second and acceleration as units of meters per second squared. All terms must have the same units. Whenever you're adding and subtracting, the terms must all have the same units. So you cannot add a distance to a velocity. You cannot add an acceleration to a velocity or an acceleration to a distance. So all the terms must have the same units. So if the terms don't have the same units, then you've made a mistake. <laughs> All right, let's look at an example. The brakes on your car can slow you at the rate of 5.2 meters per second squared. If you're going 137 kilometers per hour and suddenly see a state trooper, what is the minimum time in which you can get your car under the 90 kilometer per hour speed limit? Assume the acceleration is constant. All right, so the first thing we do is we draw a diagram. So here's a diagram and I put in a little block to represent my car at t equals zero. My initial velocity, I wrote 137 kilometers per hour. I'm going to convert that into SI units. So that's 38.1 meters per second. And my acceleration is negative 5.2 meters per second squared. Why is it negative? <clears throat> well, it's negative because I'm slowing down. Remember, displacement has a direction, velocity has a direction, acceleration has a direction. If my velocity and acceleration point in the same direction, I speed up, and if my velocity and acceleration point in opposite directions, I'm slowing down. So negative acceleration does not necessarily mean I'm slowing down. Suppose I was traveling in the negative direction. My velocity would be negative. And if I slowed down, my acceleration would then be positive, even though I was slowing down. It says, so we have to look at the relationship between the directions of velocity and acceleration to determine if we're speeding up or slowing down. Since I wrote my coordinate system so that my velocity is positive, 
slowing down the acceleration will be in the opposite direction which would be negative all right so we're going to break until we slow down to 90 kilometers per hour so I draw that over on the right side I want to find out what that time is so I write a question mark for the T and I know the velocity there is going to be 90 kilometers per hour and that converts to 25 meters per second all right so now I've got my problem set up we want to find the T so now we can apply the kinematic equations all right so which kinematic equations are am I going to use well I know my initial velocity and my final velocity and I want to find the time it takes so I'm going to use velocity as a function of time so V equals V naught plus a T and I want to know the time I know my initial and final velocities and I know the acceleration so I solve for T and I get V minus V naught over a my final velocity is 25 meters per second my initial velocity is 38.1 meters per second so I have 25 minus 38.1 divided by the acceleration which is negative 5.2 meters per second squared and then that reduces to 2.5 seconds all right now let's look at just the units I've got meters per second in the numerator and in the denominator I've got meters per second squared so the meter cancels out and the second in the denominator cancels out in the numerator with one of the seconds in the second squared in the denominator so that gives me seconds for the units so the units are correct so that means it takes me two and a half seconds to slow down to 90 under the speed limit do you think that's enough to get avoid a ticket probably not two and a half seconds when you're trying to avoid a ticket especially if a state trooper has a radar you're gonna get nabbed on a dry road a car with good tires may be able to break with a constant acceleration of 4.92 meters per second squared a how long does it take such a car initially traveling at 24.6 meters per second to take to stop in part B how far does it travel okay so that's a problem so the first thing let's draw a diagram we just use blocks for the cars and we'll put in a coordinate system so I've got my initial position and then my position at some later time and distance so my initial position I'm going to call that x0 and that's at t equals 0 my initial velocity 24.6 meters per second my acceleration I'm slowing down so the direction is opposite my velocity so that's negative 4.2 meters per second squared and then my later position and time are unknown but I know I'm stopped so my velocity at the later time is going to be zero so we want to find that distance at that time now, since we know the initial velocity and the final velocity and we know the acceleration we can use the velocity versus time equation to get the time it takes to come to a stop so we have v equals v naught plus a t solve for t we get v minus v naught over a so I have zero for the final velocity minus 24.6 meters per second my initial velocity divided by the acceleration of minus 4.92 meters per second squared and that gives me five seconds so that's how long it takes to come to a stop all right so now now I know how long it takes to come to a stop knowing the time now I can use that time in the position as a function of time equation to find out where I'm located or how far I've gone so now I know how long it takes to stop so I can use the position versus time equation to get the position or how far I've gone so here we solve that equation my displacement delta x is v naught t plus one half a t squared my v naught is 24.6 meters per second times the time five seconds and then the one half is the 0.5 times my acceleration which is negative 4.92 meters per second squared don't forget the negative sign 
and then times the t squared, so I've got 5 seconds squared. So I crunch those numbers, I get 61.5 meters. So that's how far I traveled breaking to a stop. All right, so we've got all the answers for this problem. All right, so that's the end of these two examples for motion in one dimension. I'll do a couple more examples for motion in one dimension where involving two or more objects, and so we'll see how those work. All right, so practice some problems on your own, and within a little practice, you should be very good at solving these problems. Hi, Dr. C here. I want to ask you to please help support this channel. There are links in the video description to Amazon.com. If you purchase any items from Amazon by entering through these links, I receive a small commission to help produce more content. There is no additional cost to you whatsoever. Also, please leave your comments, questions, or suggestions. Thank you for supporting this channel, and I hope you find it useful.